I did a video on the Avante A10 the other day and I was talking about how it had a thousand watt peak power but the RMS rating was actually a bi-amp system where you had 250 watts going to the woofer on a class D amp and you had 50 watts going to the horn on a class AB amplifier. Now some people said, wow that sounds underpowered, I want a thousand watt speaker. But the thing is, is that uh, a couple things. First of all, wattage doesn't equal output. I used to have this Dodge Dakota that got, I don't know, about 13 miles to the gallon. I also had a Porsche 944 S2 that got 32 miles per gallon. Now if I drove my Dodge 100 miles, it would take a, about 7 gallons of gas to go 100 miles, roughly. I'm terrible at math. If I drove my Porsche 100 miles, it would take 3 gallons of gas to go roughly 100 miles, a little more. So does that mean that my Dodge was faster than my Porsche because it consumed more fuel? Absolutely not. That's kind of like wattage and speakers. It doesn't really matter how much wattage your speakers are actually consuming or how much your amp is actually producing anymore with powered speakers because it's all about output. Now, in the old days, we used to worry about how many watts our speaker were like at continuous or RMS, and then we had to match up an amplifier to it. So we absolutely had to know what the wattage was and we had to know what the impedance was and we had to match things up properly or things would overheat or distort and we could cause a lot of problems even by underpowering the speakers. Today with powered speakers, it doesn't matter because everything's kind of built into the cabinet. The speakers are matched up with the amplifier all in one package. Now, the better the speaker company, the better the matchup. That's just how that goes because sometimes we'll have a powered speaker that does distort. Maybe things aren't matched up very well. We'll have a better quality speaker that doesn't distort because things are matched up better inside. Seeing how we don't have to match this up anymore, again, who cares? But is my speaker really a thousand watts? And the answer is usually not. And that's because speaker companies figured out a long time ago, if they fudge those numbers and they tell you they have a thousand watt speaker, you're gonna get excited and you're gonna buy it because that's what you base your purchasing decisions on. You think wattage equals output, it doesn't. That's SPL, DB, all that kind of fun stuff. I was at NAM probably about six or seven years ago and there was a really good speaker company there that had a great cabinet. It was 350 watts and it sounded fantastic. It was good and loud, perfect for mobile DJs. There was another company there that had a cabinet that wasn't nearly as nice didn't have nearly the DB that the other cabinet did, the SPL, but they were selling like crazy. People were buying it because they were advertising them as a thousand watt speakers, when in reality, they were nowhere near a thousand watts. Now this company I'm talking about, this 350 watt speaker was like, man, we just can't get these speakers sold because people are looking at this thousand watts as better than our 350 watts. Even though the thousand watts is a lie, they still buy this one. So if you can't beat them, join them. And that's what speaker companies have done because that's what you base your purchasing decisions on. The only time watts really matters is when we're talking about hooking them up to a breaker. We don't want a pop breaker, so we want to figure out how many watts our speakers are actually producing to figure out how many speakers we can put on a single breaker. That's it. So if you don't believe me, if you think you have 1,000 watt speakers, get yourself one of these. I've got one of these. This is a kilowatt. You can plug a speaker into this, you can plug this into the wall, and crank up your speaker and see if it gives you anywhere near a thousand watts. Let's try it. I mean, don't take my word for it, give it a try. You can get this at Home Depot for like 20 bucks. Ben Still was doing a demo on this. And in fact, Ben Still did a great video on this. Look in the comment section on YouTube and I'll put a link to that. It's from the Shucky News from a couple of years ago. But what's cool about this, it also measures amps that's drawing from the wall. And that's going to help you decide how many things you can put on a single breaker at a gig. That kind of stuff is helpful when it comes to watts and amps and all that. But in reality, when it comes to speaker output, not only are these companies lying to you for marketing reasons, maybe they're advertising peak power, they're giving you theoretical numbers. Um, you know, Ben Stowe said in his video, the only way a lot of these speakers are going to get anywhere near a thousand watts is if lightning strikes them. And this peak thing, by the way, it's kind of like saying, okay, if a thousand watts hit these speakers for a split second, theoretically, they might not blow up. Theoretically, they don't know. They probably will blow up, but theoretically, for just a split second, maybe they wouldn't. It's all marketing with this wattage thing, so don't worry about that. Look at your SPL, look at your DB, and listen. Make sure you like how they sound. Don't base your decisions on price. Don't base your decisions on wattage, because it just doesn't matter. Practice and enjoy.